What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. I've got a quick video for you today. Um, I recently had a CPU cooler fan go out on my daily driver here and unfortunately I had to put the stock cooler in just so that I could use my PC but I'm not able to do any CPU mining and it's a 5950X so we need something pretty beefy and you guys recommended this. This is the Vtrue U6 dual tower CPU cooler and I wanted to do a little unboxing and a before and after on temps so let's see if we can do a little red panda mining here and unbox this with one hand so what do we got we've got a parts list this is probably mounting hardware Ah, nice. So usually a CPU cooler like this is going to show up disassembled and you've got to clip the fans together. But I think this one might be a little different. Yeah. See, our clips are already on and assembled, which is nice. I bought a used uh, Dark Rock Pro for my 5800X3D and it didn't have one of those clips, so I kind of had to rig it, but yeah, this thing looks like it is going to do the job. Nice, solid surface. I noticed, uh, I watched a Jay's Two Cents video, and it showed the heat pipes that were going into this were kind of soldered together with, uh, I'm not sure what they used, but it wasn't copper, so you had copper mixed in with some other alloy. And in this case, it's one solid plate, which is nice. And you've got all of your connections here. So let's do a little before and after and see what kind of difference this makes. Now, right now, I'm not doing any CPU mining. Uh, I can CPU mine on about half the cores. Currently, we're just GPU mining some lithium on my 4090. But uh, yeah, let's, let's do a little before and after. I'm gonna switch over to the PC. All right, guys, so we're back at the PC. You can see that I am GPU mining on my 4090. It is putting out a considerable amount of heat sitting directly underneath that CPU cooler. And the way that that fan is sucking in air, it's sucking in air directly from the top of the GPU backplate. So once I get it changed out, that's going to change the direction of the airflow from where it's sucking in. And it should be sucking in air facing the 140 millimeter fans at the front so that's going to help tremendously but let's go ahead and take a look at where we're sitting at temps right now so we're currently sitting at about 71 c i really don't have much running other than the miner i've got photoshop open and that's pretty much about it uh, you can see the gpu is under load sitting at about 65 c while we're mining a lithium so let's go ahead and take a look at the bat file here and you can see that I am only running eight threads and let's go ahead and launch this and see what temps are looking like all right so you can see here that we are just running eight threads you can hear the fans ramp up let's go ahead and take a look at temps so we've already jumped up to 81 almost 82 C after about five or 10 minutes, this is probably gonna be getting close to 90 C, which is no bueno. So I don't wanna run this too long, don't wanna damage the CPU, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down. And we should see our CPU temp start to drop back into the 70s. And now that that test is complete, I'm gonna go ahead and jump off and install the new CPU cooler and we'll see how well it does. All right guys, we got the CPU cooler installed and we're gonna check temps, but I wanna recreate the exact same circumstances as before. So you can see we've got the GPU, the 4090 running again, mining a lithium, still sitting about the same hash rate, using about the same power, producing about the same heat. And if we take a look at CPU temps right now, drastic reduction, we're currently sitting at about 41 degrees Celsius. Now that is about a 30 degree drop at idle from where we were at previously, which is outstanding. GPU temps sitting about the same at 67 degrees Celsius. 
So, let's go ahead and pull up our bat file once again. And we're going to launch it on 8 threads just as we had before. We're going to watch our CPU temps once again. You can see we're using 8 threads. And we jumped up to 51 degrees Celsius. You can see that right here. And we're going to let this run for a little while and then we're going to switch it over to 16 threads and see how it does. Alright, as you can see, it is performing very, very well, but the ultimate test here is going to be to run all 16 threads, so we're going to go ahead and close this out, and we're going to edit the bat file. I'm going to see where our CPU temps drop down to probably at around 42 degrees after it's warmed up a little bit. All right, let's see what it does.
All right, guys, so the results speak for themselves. This particular cooler, the VTrue U6 Dual Tower, does an excellent job of cooling my 5950X at 100% load. So I recommend this. It came highly recommended from the community. I know there's a lot of different options out there, and I want to cover some of those real quickly. So uh, if you think that you don't need such a big cooler, you could perhaps go with the V5 which is not the dual tower, it's just the single fan and it only has five heat pipes as opposed to six like the U6 does. But the price difference between them is 10 bucks. You got free shipping on Amazon. I'm gonna leave an affiliate link down in the description below. I know a lot of the other guys are using the Wraith Prism coolers and you could probably find these pretty cheap but I think because miners like them uh, prices have gone up on them a little bit so there's like a used one here for 32 bucks but you're gonna pay 15 bucks for shipping there's some that are 68 here's another one for 40 bucks with free shipping but I guess if you need something that's low profile this might be the way to go but don't buy it on Amazon cuz you're gonna pay 65 bucks for it Six, yeah 60 bucks I mean, they don't get much cheaper, unfortunately, on Amazon, so no affiliate link there. But uh, this also came recommended from someone who replied to my Twitter post about this. Uh, BMO Blockchain Solutions says the Frost Tower beats everything without the BS RGB. So if you don't want RGB and you want to save a couple of bucks, this might be the way to go. Also, one thing to look out for if you do, regardless, I guess, of what you buy, Always check to make sure that there isn't a used option. Um, oh, here's one for... No, that's the same price, sorry. But yeah, I, I did actually buy one used, and it was only $31. Unfortunately, it did not come with the little clips for the fan, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm sure I can figure something else out. But if I had known those weren't going to come with it, I would have just paid the regular price for it. Anyways... That's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoy the content. Do me a favor before you go. Hit that like, and if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so, and I will see you on the next one.